Hello and welcome to Wineskins, a program featuring reflections on the lives of the saints and the sacred scriptures, along with a variety of topics and issues from a Catholic perspective. I'm your host, Father Jim Corda. Our show is sponsored by the annual Bishop's Appeal, the Catholic Communication Campaign, and St. Paul's Catholic Books and Gifts, a division of the Society of St. Paul. On our show today, I will interview Barb Walco, and we will talk about faithful citizenship. We will also hear more about the life of St. Jean Jugan and the readings for this 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. That and more on Wineskins. And now we will hear more about the upcoming year for the guests on the First Friday Club of Greater Youngstown. The First Friday Club of Greater Youngstown is an organization of Catholics which sponsors a monthly luncheon speaker series providing an exploration of Catholic teaching and religious thought on the spiritual, theological, moral, and social issues of our time. We offer an opportunity for the Catholic community and others to integrate the principles of religious faith into our everyday lives and work. First Friday Club has just completed its 10th season, and we've had a wonderful lineup of speakers and wonderful response this year. Some highlights from our 10th season include we had Jim Tressel, president of Youngstown State University, speak. We had Dr. Lou Zona, the director of the Butler Institute of American Art, spoke to us about the art of genius, five artists inspired by God and the universe. And in July, we had Dr. Scott Hahn from St. Paul's Center for Biblical Theology in Steubenville, Ohio. And we had over 300 people come for Dr. Hahn's presentation. I'm here today with Ray Novotny, who is our director of programming. Ray, can you tell us a little bit about our upcoming season and who you have scheduled? I would love to. The topics that we're covering in September, Blessings Abound, Sacraments, Scripture, Song, Symbol, a closer look at what takes place during Mass. We have not had a liturgical presentation for probably the last two or three years. We're due to tie back into our liturgies. In October, Integral Ecology, The Central Teaching of Laudato Si, done by Vince Miller from the University of Dayton. November is speaking frankly about Francis, a behind-the-scenes look at how the Pope is trying to reform the Church and how some people are trying to stop him. Our presenter is Robert Mickens, who's editor-in-chief of Global Pulse out of Rome, Italy. December is Francis and what is happening at the Church at this time. Our presenter is John Allen, who joins us just about every December. January 5th, Magnificent Distractions, Hurdles to Living Contemplatively. Our presenter is Dr. Michael Downey out of the Passionist Retreat Center in Mater Dolorosa, California. February is Church History by our own Bishop George Murray. March is Catholic Perspectives on Immigration by Sister Suzanne Suzani who is a law professor out of Duquesne University. April 6th, Facing the Challenges of Sacramental Life, Dr. George Wargel, professor from Duquesne University. May 4th is I Was in Prison and You Came. Sister Mary Harwood is joining us from the Diocese of Cleveland. July 6th is 40 Days of Gratitude, presented by Jim Merhut. And we close on August 3rd with Islam and the Catholic Church, presented by Gabriel Reynolds, Professor of Islamic Studies and Theology from the University of Notre Dame. It's a really great lineup, and we have people coming from all over the world, actually, for this one. They're flying in from everywhere. The First Friday Club of Greater Youngstown meets the first Thursday of every month, Our luncheons are held at Antone's Banquet Center, which is located at 8578 Market Street in Boardman, Ohio, near Western Reserve Road. Our luncheon starts at 1130 in the morning, and the speaker begins at noon, and we finish at 1 p.m. Cost is $16 per person 
organizations and groups can buy tables for $128 for a table for eight, or you can buy a group season pass for one full table for all 12 series for $1,408, which includes one free meal. Our telephone number is area 330-720-4498, or you can visit our website at www.firstfridayclubofgreateryoungstown.org. For Wineskins, we are Mary Ellen Brannigan and Ray Novotny. The Feast of St. Jean Jugan is celebrated on August 30th. To tell us more about this foundress of the Little Sisters of the Poor is Bobby Bankovich. She is from St. Paul Church in North Canton. Jean Jugan, the sixth of eight children of Joseph and Marie Jugan, was born on October 25, 1792, in a small fishing village of Brittany, France during the French Revolution, a time when congregations of men and women religious were being suppressed by the national government. When she was three and a half, her father was lost at sea, and her mother struggled for years to keep the family together in their one-room, earthen-floored cottage. At the age of 15, Jean became a kitchen maid for a family that not only cared for its own members, but also served the poor elderly people nearby. Ten years later, Jean became a nurse at a nearby hospital. After six years of devoted toil at the hospital, she was so worn out that she had to leave this work. Soon thereafter, she joined a third order group founded by St. John Eudes and became a servant and friend of a woman she had met through the Third Order, a good Christian woman named Mademoiselle Lecoq. Daily, the two women spent hours in prayer, and together they assisted at Mass, taught catechism to the town's children, and cared for the poor and other unfortunates until the elderly woman died. After her friend's death in 1837, the 45-year-old Jean and a 72-year-old woman named Françoise Aubert rented part of a humble cottage and continued a similar life in the city. They were joined by a 17-year-old orphan, and the three women formed a community of prayer. At age 47, with the approval of the two ladies, Jean turned her attention to the most pitiful of the poor, the abandoned old ladies. In 1839, she brought home a blind widow and gave up her own bed to provide sleeping quarters for their guest. Henceforth, she was to share intimately in the sufferings of the poor, even physically, considering herself one of them. This characteristic is expressed in the name that eventually developed for Jean's charitable work, the Little Sisters of the Poor. By 1853, the association numbered 500 and had houses as far away as England. Jean wrote a simple rule for them and herself. Putting aside personal pride, the Little Sisters daily went out door to door asking for food, clothing, and money. Whatever they had left over from their earnings, they gave to the poor. As the number of guests grew, so also did her little community. Mother Marie of the Cross, as Jean was now known, founded six more houses for the elderly, all staffed by the Little Sisters of the Poor. By the time that Pope Leo XIII gave his final approval to the community's constitutions in 1879, there were 2,400 Little Sisters of the Poor. After her peaceful death, Jean was buried in the graveyard at the Mother House. She would eventually be highly praised in the French Academy for her community's compassionate care of elderly poor people. Her cause for sainthood was introduced in 1970. She was beatified in Rome by St. Pope John Paul II on October 3, 1982, and canonized by Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI on October 11, 2009. Jean Jugan saw Christ in what Blessed Mother Teresa of Calcutta would describe as his distressing disguises. In his homily at the Beatification Mass, the Pope said, this is why the spirituality of Jean Jugan attracts followers of Christ 
and fills their hearts with simplicity and humility, with hope and evangelical joy, having their source in God and in self-forgetfulness. For Wineskins, I'm Bobby Bankovich. With me now is Barb Walker, who is the Director of Religious Education for the Diocese of Youngstown. And Barb, it's a pleasure to have you on Wineskins today. Thank you, Father Quarter. It's always good to see you. Well, we're going to talk about a special program that's going to happen on Wednesday, September 21st in our diocese in the Youngstown area and in the Canton area. And we want to let the folks that are with us know about this important program, especially in this election year. And we're calling it Forming Consciences for Faithful Citizenship. What exactly do we mean by faithful citizenship and forming our conscience? I think our understanding of faithful citizenship is taking our heritage as a Catholic people and applying it in the world in which we live. We all know how important it is to embrace our baptismal call to spread the good news. And as citizens in the United States or citizens of the world, we're obligated to use that perspective of Christ in our dealings with others in how we promote the common good and establish relationships. I think the one thing that we would like to let the folks know that are with us is that we as a church don't tell people who to vote for or how to vote, but we tell them, in essence, this is the information that we want to share with you that will help you make that faithful citizenship call and also following your conscience. Does that make sense? Of course it does. The reality is that our bishops as chief catechists of their people are obligated to assist us in forming consciences that are faithful to the gospel. A well-formed conscience describes a person who's a mature Christian adult. They have availed themselves to quality education. They rely on their life experiences, reason, and most especially on the Holy Scriptures and the teaching authority of the church, the magisterium. One good resource, of course, is the Catechism of the Catholic Church. And there are other resources, documents, and statements by our bishops that assist us in following that path. We know that on September 21st that our Bishop Murray will be there. And what will he provide for the folks that attend? What exactly will he be sharing with them? It's important for Bishop Murray to guide the people of the diocese in understanding what the bishops teach regarding public policy. Bishop Murray is very familiar with Catholic social teaching and how to have that Catholic perspective in perceiving issues of public policy, and he knows what the bishop's statements are. So we're thrilled that Bishop Murray is putting it on his calendar and will lead us through a healthy reflection and discussion. And we know that uh, Jim Tobin from the Ohio Catholic Conference will also be there. And what would be his expertise in his sharing with the folks that are there? Jim Tobin is a long-serving associate for the Catholic Conference of Ohio in social concerns. And Jim is very, very articulate in describing what the Ohio bishops have to say about issues of public policy at the state level. He has spoken in our diocese before, and he always is able to cut through some of the tougher issues and get to the heart of the matter. Why is it important for us to look at that authentic source of information instead of what we just hear or what we just see on television all the time? Why is it important for us to really get to the root of what it's all about? Well, as Catholics in the world, we have an obligation to see the real purpose of policy and decision-making as assisting the common good. We have an obligation to assist all people and to rely on one another to build up the kingdom of God. It's not to assert one position over another, but to see how all people can work together. The other thing that I'd like us to talk about is some of the specifics about the day. If folks that are interested, and we certainly hope that people are interested in attending, what can they expect and what do they do to get more information? Well, again, the date is Wednesday, September 21st. 
It's going to be held at two locations. St. Michael's in Canfield will host the afternoon session from 1 to 4. St. Michael's in Canton will host the evening session from 6 to 9. And what do people need to do in order to uh, register? Because I think that would be important. This event is open to anyone who's interested in expanding their knowledge and reflection on faithful citizenship. But we do request reservations in order that we could prepare appropriately for materials and light refreshments. There will be a flyer sent around to various parishes and schools and other Catholic institutions. You can also check out the diocesan website where there will be an opportunity to register online for this event. You could ask your pastor or your other parish staff leaders for assistance. Now, the other thing is, obviously, this took place four years ago. In your experience, how important was that event, and what did it do really to help people in the long run? Anytime we could expand people's understanding of their call to discipleship and their presence as a Catholic living in the world, I think that we are helping one another. We learn by talking by listening and by sharing our experiences and helping others to reflect upon that experience and then help other people in a civil discourse that's mandated by our faith and by decency. And let's say that some folks are unable to come to the event on September 21st. Where can they go to get more information on really forming consciences so to be faithful citizens? You could always visit the Catholic Diocese of Youngstown website, doi.org. You can visit the Ohio Catholic Conference website, ohiocathconf.org. And especially note that the USCCB has significant information on forming consciences for faithful citizenship, for peace and human development, for justice issues, just go to usccb.org and you can check on issues and actions, faithful citizenship, justice, peace. Remember that the USCCB represents the teaching authority in our country, and that is the only place to get authentic information about how to respond to our obligation to be citizens of the United States. Well, Barb Wonka, we certainly appreciate your presence on Wineskins and for giving us all of this information. And we certainly hope that the folks that are with us would attend either the session in Canfield from 1 to 4 on September 21st at St. Michael's or in Canton from 6 to 9 in the evening at St. Michael's in Canton. And if you want more information, go to your parish. They have the flyers. Thank you again for being with us. Thank you very much, Father Corda. For Wineskins, I'm Father Jim Corda. To receive more information on that and other issues, and to listen to Wineskins, visit the website of the Catholic Diocese of Youngstown at www.doy.org. Stay with us. We'll be back in a moment. The Diocese of Youngstown is seeking qualified candidates for the Parish Leader Formation Program. The program will train current deacons, religious men and women, and laymen and women to become certified parish leaders, making them eligible to apply for parish leader openings in the future. Applicants to the Parish Leader Formation Program will be screened and interviewed. Please contact Pete Schaefer at 330-744-8451. By the time we can walk, each of us yearns for the joy that comes from being able to do for ourselves. Church World Service believes that being self-reliant is a joy everyone should share. So around the block or around the world, share the joy. Church World Service. Our song today is by sacred musician John Angotti. It is from his CD entitled Angotti Live, The Memphis Concert.
Our scripture reflections for this 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time will be by Father Terry Hazel. He is pastor of St. Michael Church in Canfield. Today we celebrate the 22nd Sunday in the Ordinary Time of our church year. Three times a day we are reminded that we are dependent on other people. Each time we sit down to eat. With hunger in our stomachs, we realize that all we have before us are gifts of God. Breakfast is a gift, lunch is a gift, and so is dinner, and so is everything else that we have as well. We did not grow the fruit, we did not harvest the grain, we did not raise the chicken or cow, and so it goes. It is no wonder that the beautiful grace we say goes like this. Bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts, which we are about to receive, from thy bounty, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The recognition that all the food we eat is a gift lends us to a further consideration. Everything we have is a gift, including life itself. We are a dependent people, dependent on God and dependent on others. Dependency is another word for humility. A humble person recognizes that he or she needs others and even rejoices in that fact. The humble person recognizes and rejoices in the gifts of others, gifts from which he or she benefits, gifts by which the whole world becomes better. The humble person says that we are all winners because we depend on each other. Humility is related to a deep sense of need. We all need the gifts of others. There are some people who refuse to recognize that fact. They like to think of themselves as independent, self-sufficient. They like to do it for themselves. They like to make it on their own. But they are just kidding themselves. I once heard a person brag that he put himself through college and that he did it all by himself. I thought, oh yeah? Did you build the car that took you there? Did you write the textbook? And we could go on and on. Self-sufficiency is another word for pride. Christian people declare the need for God. Everything we have is a gift. Nothing is deserved. Nothing is merited. And nothing is earned. We depend on God for everything. The air we breathe, the food we eat, the love we give, and even the money that we work for. So often people fail to see money as a gift, but instead think that it is theirs as an absolute reality to do whatever they want with it. I worked hard for my money. Well, some people work very hard for no money. All we possess is for the good of others, just as all they possess is for the good of us and ourselves and others. Our coal our intelligence, our wheat, our technology, all for the good of others and the betterment of God's creation. If we can understand this challenge, then we can understand the connection between humility and dependence, and we can understand our scriptures today. As we listen to the first and third readings today, we listen to the theme of humility. We hear words about the importance of humility and the awareness that all we have is a gift. Sirach reminds us to conduct our affairs with humility, and we will be loved even more than the giver of gifts. And of course, the gospel tells us that whoever humbles himself will be exalted, and whoever exalts himself will be humbled. Humility is another word for dependence. As soon as we realize that we are dependent, then we can graciously become humble. And when we reach the state of humility, then we can share our gifts with others just as they share with us. The Grace Before Meals is a great prayer to say over everything we have. Notice it doesn't say one word about food, but instead it goes like this. Bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts which we are about to receive from thy bounty through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray that prayer every day over everything that we have. For Wineskins, this is Father Terry Hazel. We may or may not have prestige in the eyes of others, but in the eyes of Jesus we do. 
And Jesus has the only vote that counts, and his word on the subject is this, the one who humbles themselves will be exalted. That is the true way to have prestige in the eyes of Jesus. Wineskins is made possible by the annual Bishop's Appeal, the Catholic Communication Campaign, and St. Paul's Catholic Books and Gifts. The program is produced by CTNY, the Catholic Telecommunications Network of Youngstown. I'm your host, Father Jim Corda, wishing you a blessed Sunday and a safe week.